Good day, top funders. Today we're talking to Matt from Contact Ship. Hello, Matt. How are you? Hi, Ellen. Thanks for having me. I'm very well. I hope you as well. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, Matt, can you tell us a little uh, a bit about Contact Ship, please? Yes, uh, of course. Contact Ship is a um, solution we are developing. It's about um, achieving a real relationship management. Um, for us, social interactions with our family, friends, and people we meet are one of the most important factors for happiness and contentment in our lives. If everything works well, we feel wonderful. If it doesn't, we become lonely and feel depressed. And not just since Corona crisis, there are quite a few people having issues, troubles with maintaining and, and building friendships. There are even scientific studies about it that millennials, 2010, 22% of them feel lonely and don't have enough friends. And now we could say that's life, or we can create tools to minimize such negative effects and ease making friends. And that's what Contact Ship is about. We are developing a solution to build up, maintain, ease making friendships. Wow, fascinating. Okay, now this is a whole new realm for me, Matt. <laughs> so, so what I'm getting you, you know, it's re relationship management. Uh, it's a solution to uh, relationships. Okay. Now, mm -hmm. one sense that's for me that's like a business speak, but it's not. It's actually about what relations. What relationships are we talking about, Matt? Is it like mom and dad, sibling to sibling, uh, friends to friends? What sort of relationships are we talking about? Basically, of, of, about all of them. You can uh, manage your friends, your family, or people you like to hang out with. And that's uh, is it, uh, imagine you have an address book in your in your cell phone, and now imagine your cell phone has a whole types of additional features like putting reminders for you, giving you some hints for conversation starters and um, uh, helping you to have a really nice and good overview of your social circles. And that is communication for you. Ah, okay. And yeah, I, so that's where, so that's really interesting. So I'm really into empathy. <laughs> so it's really is, it's sort of the, the app. So it's an app based um, solution. Mm -hmm. And it really is, em the empathy part is, is based in because you will have Re reminders of of uh, birth important birthdays co coming up or important events coming up etc is that correct for example or you can say i want to be reminded because i like alan if i haven't been in touch with him like three weeks or a month or a half a year just make a reminder that i keep in touch with him okay it must it must be easy smooth and easy because it has to be fun and is this like another social media platform or is this something completely different? We call it private media because uh, um, your relationships are very personal for you. And it's not you can't really share them with other people. It's about you structuring, saving information for yourself, which makes your life easier for yourself. So it's not a social media, it's more private media, I would say. Which that's fascinating because that's a big trend into the future. I know Apple, et cetera, are really pushing privacy at the moment. So all these reminders and and inputs that you put in, I mean, the user, I, I take it, will manually put these in. And then that's just contained within their own profile. So it's not really shared out across other profiles, say to your brother, sister, or best friend mm -hmm. or whatever. Is that correct? There's no collaboration in it. So it's just for you and your information. So there's not even a button to share something because we, we also think uh, you can't share that type of information with, in a meaningful way because I think about a person different than you would think about him, him or her. And there's no, there's no relation for it. So um, you might call it being judgment, judgmental in a positive or even negative way, but it's <laughs> for me, I have my opinion about somebody and um, for me, it's just to memorize it easier because I'm, I'm hanging out with, with a lot of people. There's one study from psychologist. He tells that you can uh, have the relations with 150 people in your mind. And that's it. There's no space. There's no more space for it. And I realized if I don't write stuff down, 
I end up speaking, talking about the same topics over and over and over again with the same people. And that's the best way into a boring, boring conversation. And after a while, uh, <laughs> they don't want to talk with you anymore at all. So, and to prevent that, uh, it's it's uh, it's uh, the, the best way is just to make a quick notice in 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 your profile to say, okay, Alan likes to talk about crowdfunding, and I will never forget it because it's written down. Wow. Okay, this is fascinating. It's it's so on point. It's so much. Do I say zeitgeist? I mean, it really is very topical of the mo of the moment, Matt. Fantastic. Um. So let's. Let's take it in, in steps. Uh, I, I believe it's on Android at the moment, and and mm -hmm. then you'll probably you're going to do a browser based one, and then you'll do the iOS, uh, iPhone. Um, in, in, it's all in development. Um, so the person downloads from the Android uh, Play Store, Google Play Store, opens it up, and then do they begin then to they put their own profile in, and then what's the next steps after that? Uh, we start with Android application, you're right, but we are on a, they call it hybrid development. So we are on an Angular software, Ionic Angular software. Therefore, it's easy to start the iPhone app afterwards after a short time. But you're right, it's, it's uh, then meaningful to concentrate on one platform first. And if it works and people like it, we have all the features together we want, then we will uh, kick in with, uh, with the iPhone version as well. And you're right, it's a download. You download the application in the store, assume we are live, you install it, and then you can choose to sync them or all of your phone book accounts with the application. You could say, I want to take my Google contacts in it, or I just want my local contacts in it, or my my uh, my Microsoft context, you can decide which which you will include, and then you can start working with them. Wow, fantastic! And then once the contacts come in, then you can begin to add the different um, features that we were talk our points of data. I, I'm not too, what what words do you use for that sort of thing? Of like uh, you use reminders or favorite things. Is that is that the sort of different categories that you have? We have we have a few sections. We have the the, the basic data, for example, your name, your age, and uh, uh, yes, uh, you, your relation to me. If you are an acquaintance or a friend or part of the family, and then we have something we call descriptions, which would say how do you look like, which stuff do you enjoy, where you like to go on vacation, what are wishes of you, desires of you, what stuff you don't like even. And then we have something we call contact history, which shows when did we meet last time, when did we have a phone call, when did we interact last time in a meaningful way. And don't speak about liking a post of you on Facebook or, for, or for forwarding one of your videos on Twitter. That's not for me, it's not a, a bonding type of, of event between us. No, And the third category would be which groups are you uh, in or which people do you like or don't you like? For example, I could say, Alan is connected with Petra. They are friends. That would be like social relationships insights application as well. And the easiest form is just to rate somebody. Some piece of people I like, I can rate good. People I have problems with, I can rate negative. That's uh, the call in English, I guess, um, pointing out red flags relations. <laughs> Okay. Um, now, um, who's your t target audience for this? Who's your target group for this app? Uh, actually, nearly everybody could replace this phone book with it because uh, if you just use uh, the, the functionality that you can add some more information, it's not like in your, in your phone book where you can add the company and comment and that's it. You can add description like Alan likes horses or he is afraid of cats <laughs> something like this you could you could add as well and that would be a benefit uh, for for nearly everybody what I guess main in the main peer group are people with a lot of contacts people like me with really really bad memory <laughs> because it goes in one ear out the other ear and uh, for me uh, writing things down down in a, in a structured way is uh, really a relief for me and 
people with social troubles like uh, uh, who are bad connecting to people might find it useful, especially useful as well. Okay, great, Matt. And is it is there a one-off cost for purchase, or is there, is there a monthly subscription, say, with a premium plan? How does that side work? Can you repeat again because I've got the incoming call? <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm at, I, I was just asking about um, in terms of cost uh, to the end user. Is it uh, like a, a one-off purchase price, or is there a monthly cost, say, with a premium plan? How how is that side? We we stick in a system like uh, uh, some of the uh, business social uh, social media applications. So um, most users can use our application free of charge for good, even without advertisement. And then there are some we call it custom features uh, um, and uh, com uh, on features which which make it more easy to to work with it. And they are premium feature. And if you want to have them, it's on the, on a plan. And what would some of those extra features be for the premium plan? Uh, would be, for example, so that you can use the application on multiple devices, and you have a cross device sync with the application, so you can connect, have the app on your cell phone and on your tablet and on the next cell phone. That would be a, a premium feature. As well, um, for the descriptions of somebody, we have something we call custom categories. So we have a whole bunch of categories which are a standard like food, animals, artists, music, etc., which, which are there already. But if you love playing golf, and you want to include the golf courses people are playing on, that would be like a, a premium feature as well. This is fantastic. Really interesting. Like, I see it also in a business, <laughs> business use, you know, I'm, uh, as well, you know, I know it's for personal use, but I'm, and I suppose in time, you could, there's a, there's an idea of, you know, in terms of a business use, in terms of building up a profile of your customer, um, you know what? You know it's always nice to send people gifts, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There's, there's so there's really many ways that you can really develop contact ship. Mm -hmm. I think over time, you can, uh, as a, in a business sense, you could use a custom category to uh, call it client status or company or or interests of uh, products. And you could use it as a business solution already. What we don't provide is something like a lead or, or opportunities and you can put uh, amounts in it and you put calculations. That's not there in the moment. That mm -hmm. could be uh, something for the future. But there are plenty of business solutions. I don't think we can compete with them anyway. And we leave out collaboration and I guess a business tool for for a company with one with more than one person that they should use a business solution mm -hmm. but i know quite a few business people who like to put some some personal details of their clients as well and that would be something you put in contact check fantastic okay now let's move on uh, to the up and coming crowdfunding campaign matt and can mm -hmm. you talk a, a little more about that please Yes, we are uh, trying to raise some funds for the final part of our development. It's about uh, um, um, data protection topics most, mostly. We want to um, um, get funding to involve external companies to make some more testing, security testing our, our application. And we uh, calculate around with five to 10,000 uh, euros for that. Uh, and um, that's uh, some sort of money we would love to get some uh, support from the community of people who want to want to take part in our project and help us to reach this additional um, uh, part of security as well we have been developing since 2019 we have been on a company founder program so uh, our Two developers, Ankit V and Havinda Mant, have been working full time for over a year on the project, but uh, and that was just for living expense and not for um, um, employing additional people, staff for for such such of testing and security issues, uh, uh, management, and uh, social and how you call it, tax consultants and law lawyers and stuff like that. 
Okay, great. And um, two things, what platform are you intending to go live on? And secondly, is there any, uh, are you building in benefits for the people who do donate to your uh, campaign? We want to use Kickstarter for the project because they have a whole sections for applications. I think we will fit in perfectly for it. And we will provide some benefits for users uh, who uh, uh, support us. So we will start that we uh, have earlier beta testing for them. We can provide uh, free use of uh, premium features for a while as well for a period of time. Let's say can use full features as well in the beginning. I think that that would be would be a nice way for conversation. Uh, uh, yes, uh, for the part of them. And it's a great way to build up engagement with the with your audience and for the audience to get familiar with the app. Um, very good. Okay. Is, it? Um, yeah. is there any? Can I just ask you? Where, whereabouts? You're saying about company from company formation, etc. Whereabouts are you it's actually based, Matt? Where is contact ship based? Contact Chip is based in Germany, in a little city we call Jena, Jena, Germany. We're a technology standard, a, a, a place with a lot of bioscience and a big university. What is a small city with around 100,000 people living there? And a quarter of them are young people, students. Yeah, I, I love regional startups. <laughs> Where I'm based is Belfast is becoming a regional startup center like your, like your city. <laughs> um, now, is there anything else you'd like to say uh, to your prospective um, Kickstarter uh, donators this morning just before we wrap up? Yes, we, I would really appreciate your support. If you love our idea as well, if you think uh, social relationship management could be a good thing uh, to have in the future, it would be really, really amazing if you could give us uh, your, your support and uh, join our project. And we also have our Facebook group running. Uh, it's www.facebook.com, of course, and slash groups slash contact chip. And uh, please join our group, and then we have you informed. And you, if you want, you could also become alpha tester because we're going to start our alpha testing soon. And what I'll do, Matt, and contact ship, I'll put all those contact details that you mentioned in the video description below. That would be really, really amazing, Alan. Okay, well, thank you so much, uh, Matt, from contact ship. I hope your campaign is a great success. Thank you so much. Thank Mark. you very much. Bye-bye, my friend. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs> Bye.